Biological control is particularly desirable because the tactic is environmentally safe, energy self-sufficient, cost-effective, sustainable, and can be readily incorporated into integrated pest management IPM programs. Three basic strategies are used to increase the effectiveness of biological control agents. Natural enemies in the field, importation or classical, conservation and enhancement, and augmentation including inoculation and inundative. Each of these techniques can be used either alone or in combination in a biological control program. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'll go in detail about each of these tactics. Importation or classical biological control involves the deliberate introduction and establishment of natural enemies into areas where they did not previously exist. Importation programs have largely been used for pests from other countries. Usually accidentally introduced, these pests are able to develop high populations in the absence of natural enemies, which may have kept them under control in their native lands. The primary organisms that have been used in classical biological control programs in the United States have been insects that parasitize other insects or insects that prey on pest insects, mites, or weeds. Ideal species belong to groups of organisms that have very restricted host preferences so that non-target or beneficial species will not be affected. To implement a successful biological control importation program, several steps must be taken. First, the pest organism in its native area must be correctly identified. Next, searches for natural enemies are conducted in the native area and appropriate species shipped back for testing. Shipments are then held in strict quarantine to keep out potential contaminants and to confirm that the natural enemy will have minimal negative effect in the new country of release. After appropriate quarantine processing and biological testing, the natural enemies can be reared, increased in number, and released. The primary goal is to permanently establish a natural enemy species so that it can exert a regulatory influence on the pest population. Repeated releases or re-importation are often necessary. Only specially trained university and government personnel can carry out importation programs. Augmentation involves supplementing the numbers of naturally occurring biological control agents with releases of laboratory reared or field collected natural enemies. Because it is so much more expensive, augmentative approaches are usually attempted only when importation and conservation techniques are not promising. Two approaches used in augmentation are inoculative releases and inundative releases. In inoculative programs, released natural enemies reproduce in the field and build up their population so that their progeny provide control for several generations. Inoculative releases may be used to build up populations of natural enemies earlier in the season than usual or to establish a natural enemy in an area where it was not previously present. Inoculative releases are appropriate when the population of an otherwise effective natural enemy is severely devastated by pesticide applications, unfavorable weather conditions, cultivation practices, or a lack of seasonal hosts. Some examples include releasing mealybug destroyer or predatory mites in greenhouses and inoculating turf with bacterial milky spore powder for grep control. Inundative releases are aimed at achieving immediate biological control through the activities of the released individuals. Offspring of released individuals are not expected to survive to assist in control. Additional releases may be required throughout the season should pest populations approach damaging levels. Inundative releases are most effective against pests that cause economic damage only during a limited period of the, of the year and against pests in a controlled environment. A wide variety of predators and insect parasites have been used in inundative programs and are the primary method of using microorganisms and nematodes for biological control. The release of trichogramma egg parasites for codling moth, scale parasites for citrus, and incarsia parasites for whiteflies in greenhouses are three examples that show that a properly designed inundative releases can be effective tools in IPM programs. Although their use is still quite limited, natural enemy augmentation and in particular inundative releases have become increasingly important. However, many release programs have only a minimal impact on the target pest. These programs require a thorough understanding of the managed system. Significant differences in efficacy may exist among uses in different crops. There are many reasons for the deficiency of this technology. First, the inappropriate biological control agent may have been released. For many pests, there are no effective natural enemies. You have poor quality predators or parasites that may have low vigor, 
poor reproduction, disease, or poor dispersal ability. It is important to purchase from a reputable company. The released natural enemies are rapidly consumed by other natural enemies. For example, ants and other general predators can consume lacewing eggs. Biological controls are a high cost co relative to other control options such as pesticides and you don't want to pay for repeat applications. The release rate may be too low or too infrequent resulting in poor coverage. The release may be too late for effectiveness or the agent may be injured during release. The life stage of the pest is not susceptible to the agent released. Most beneficial organisms feed on or parasitize only certain life stages. Finally, the released natural enemies may be killed by pesticide applications or residues. Conservation and enhancement of established natural enemies include any activities that improve survival, dispersal, and reproduction of resident natural enemies. Many approaches can be taken. Elimination or reduction of pesticides toxic to natural enemies is an important way of improving biological control. When pesticide applications are necessary, selective materials are applied so that natural enemies are least likely to be affected. This selectivity derives from the active ingredient, formulation, method of application, and time of application. Production practices can also be manipulated to benefit natural enemies. A lack of plant diversity, for instance, can increase a crop's susceptibility to pest attack and reduce its attractiveness to natural enemies. For good survival and high reproduction, natural enemies often require shelter, alternative food sources, water, overwintering sites, and other conditions. Natural enemies of honeydew producing insects such as aphids, soft scales, white flies, and mealybugs may also require protection from ants. Ants feed on the honeydew and disrupt biological control by attacking their predators and parasites. It may be necessary to take measures to control these ants by pruning branches to deny them access to plant canopies or by applying a sticky material to tree trunks. In this table, you can see the toxicity of common types of pesticides to natural enemies. It is divided into green pesticides, including the microbials and soaps and oils, which have no or low contact toxicity and no residual toxicity. The yellow or caution category include the neonicotinoids, botanicals, and insect growth regulators. The contact toxicity varies depending on the natural enemy. Neonicotinoids is very toxic to honeybees. The residual toxicity varies based on the product. The red or broad spectrum pesticides such as organophosphates, carbamates, and pyrethroids have both contact and residual toxicity to both pests and natural enemies and may last in the environment for a longer period. Environmental factors such as weather can adversely affect natural enemy populations. Although not much can be done to diminish the ill effects of weather, the microclimates of natural enemy populations can be made more favorable through manipulation of ir irrigation, use of cover crops, modification of pruning techniques, or by changes in harvesting practices. For example, border harvesting, where a strip of alfalfa is left standing after each harvest, benefits hay production by maintaining populations of predators and parasites of alfalfa pests in the alfalfa field. In addition, border harvesting also markedly reduces ligus bug migration into cotton and other crops. Similar benefits can be obtained by border harvesting or staggering the cutting of alfalfa hay fields that are nearby or adjacent to each other. The table compares the abundance of natural enemy populations in border harvested alfalfa and conventional alfalfa. Insectary plants are nat for natural enemies provide nectar and or pollen. They are an alternate host and provide shelter. You should consider provision of resources over the whole season by planting long flowering species or multiple species. Consider the specific pests and what natural enemies you need to attract or maintain. Don't plant species that can become weedy or harbor pests. Keep a stable habitat. For example, Laura bicolor is a parasitoid wasp of mole crickets, which is a major problem in pastures. The adult wasps feed on a narrow range of nectar plants, including the southern Lara flower. When I was in grad school, I was in charge of mailing seeds of this plant to growers and ranchers for them to plant in order to increase the population of this biological control agent. There are many flowering plants that provide pollen or nectar. 
Many plants in the carrot, sunflower, and mustard family produce nectar for pollinators and natural enemies. Many woody species such as redbud, elderberry, and bottlebrush are also good sources of nectar and pollen for natural enemies. In conclusion, this video covered the different tactics you can use for implementing biological control. Biological control is a useful tool for developing an integrated pest management program.